Twiper, you spell with two P's? Yep. S-W-I-P-P-E-R? Yep. Trenches News. What's Trenches News? Is that the name of your channel? Is that your name? Yep, it's the name of my channel. From 2021 to now, about how many videos would you say you posted on YouTube? I got from the Trenches News channel. Got about 17, 1800 videos. I got about, I deleted a lot. I deleted like, I had to delete like 50 million views. So I have about 80 million within two years. Generally speaking, is one of the things that you talk about on YouTube gangs in Chicago? Yeah, I talk against them now. I let them know like, they're real. You go to jail. Ain't nobody looking out for you. Ain't only nobody sending you nothing. Only the girls who you with, if they with you, your mom, your sister. Like nobody sent me nothing. Every time I went to jail, like, you know, it's always excuse. Oh man, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind, for real. That's what that mean. Do you talk about your past gang life? Oh yeah, I tell them I got shot. I tell them like the robbery stories. If you go on my page, you're going to see like all the, like I tell them everything I've been through. I don't have nothing. Domestics and everything. The three years that I did, the three to four years I did, was the best time of my life. I got time to get in tune with myself. And when I came out, I told myself that I ain't no street. Get your kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, have the business. Stand on business. And that's what I did. You also say some pretty wild stuff online. Is that fair? I mean, can you clarify that? Like, inflammatory stuff. Like, can you clarify that? Break it down? Do you talk bad about people online? No, probably gang members. Do you talk bad about gang members? Yeah, yeah, I talk bad about them. I shame them. I bash them. I do all of that. Yeah, you know? Why do you do that? Because, like, when I try to get my message across, like, if you've been standing outside on these blocks from 12 years old to 30, and you ain't made it, no real life, that's insanity, you know? And I was doing that. And I had to realize, like, all the time that I wasted, like, I got to get in tune with my kids now. I got to figure out what they like now. I got to, you know, like, I got to double time. And then ain't no 401k playing in this. So are you out here playing in the field? When you get 40 and 50, them pills and all that shit, you gonna need them. You know what I'm saying? You gonna need medicine. You ain't going to have it because you wasted your life in the streets. So it's better to get a job. It's cool to work. It's cool to work a nine to five or whatever you got to do to support your family. And some of what you do online as Trenches News and what you post on your channel for entertainment value. When it get dry, when it get dry, we call a thing called clickbait. You know, I might call somebody up and be like, oh, man, let's say we into it. And then, you know, we get we have some fake words. Oh, you this, you that. And then it go up 100,000, 200,000 views. It's just clickbait. But all my stories are real. All my stories that I do, like my story times and all that, they real life. When you say into it with somebody, what do you mean by that? Like, for instance, I don't want to bring up no names, but like, for instance, it was this one guy, he be on YouTube doing interviews. I know his whole family, his mom and them, you know? We from the low end. We had got into it, but we weren't really into it because I know his family, you know? So to the internet, oh, you and him into it? No, we ain't into it. That's my family. Like, he might say something about my wife, but it was all planned. He don't know my wife, so it was planned. So I want to move away from YouTube, at least temporarily, and come back to Newtown. When you first became a member of the BDs, how old were you when you first became a BD? When I first became a BD, I was 15, 14, 15, something like that. Were you in school? Yeah, I was in school. I was in school. You know, I was glad that, like, like then the gang members, 
it's different timing. Like, they force you to go to school. You ain't go to school, you couldn't do nothing. Like, you can't just go slide on no block and kill nobody. Like, you probably be dead. You can't kill no kid without, no. They make you turn yourself in. So it was rules. It was rules and regulations, man. They ain't got no rules now. What kind of rules and regulations did you... By the way, did you refer to it as like the Newtown set of faction or the BDs? Did you call it something different? What did you call it? You saying where you were, what did you call it? The Newtown BDs? I mean, Newtown just the name of the projects. That ain't no member name or none of that. That's just the name of the projects. Newtown. So what type of rules and regulations are you talking about? Are we talking about Newtown rules or are we talking about BD rules? Life rules. Like shit, that's supposed to happen. Like I wouldn't say that's a BD rule. I wouldn't say that's a GD rule. Like you're supposed to tell the kids to go to school. You see a kid disrespecting his mama, you're supposed to get up on him. Like you're supposed to whip him. Like when I was growing up, the community, if you don't get whipped by your mama, you're going to get whipped by your neighbor. So I respect all that. Did you have any sort of guidelines though? Like literature, paper you're supposed to read? Yeah, and that's why these guys are misled and do anything. They don't know their paperwork. If you, it's a rules to the road. Like the rules to the road to the cars, to the books. It's rules to the road. If you understand those rules, you will move better. You will move right. But by them not learning, not understanding... See, you can learn something and memorize something, but to understand it, to understand what those words mean, you know, and that's the difference. I understood what they mean, though. I understood it. Are we talking about BD-specific paperwork? Yeah, any paperwork. BD. Yeah, we're talking about specific BD right now, but any paperwork. If you read the policies and the procedures, it teach you. It's not made for what people in the streets think it is. So right now I'm asking you specifically about the time period when you first became BD. So late 90s, early 2000s. Yep. What was the relationship like between BDs and GDs at that period of time? At that period of time, depending on where you at, if you on the streets, they was into it. But if you're in jail, it was one love. Why would it be different if you were on the streets versus if you were in jail? Man, you know what, Jason? I I try to figure it out all the time. Like, how can they go to jail and kick it but kill each other on the street? It don't make no sense to me. Like, I never understood it. I never understood it. I can't even explain that to you. Like, how can it be one love and then on the streets, y'all? I never understand it. It's a snake move to me. It's just to figure out the person, get information while you're in there on the person. It's like a backdoor move. So, you know, that's why I'm out the gang today. When, what do you mean when you say backdoor? It's trying to figure out your moves and trying to get close to you to learn like where you hanging out at and stuff like that. That's why they always tell you, hey, don't say nothing to your Selly or none of that in jail. That goes like all around the building. Like don't tell them too much. On the streets then, just the Newtown area, where you lived at, was there any conflict between the BDs and the GDs around that area? Oh yeah, we was into it with the Ida B. Wells and best of friends now, you hear me? Best of friends, no wars, all the people kicking it, like, that's a prime example of change in Chicago. I say that 39th Street, like, I say that's the change, man. Because, like, they was in real, like, it's real, was real beef when I was growing up. Like, people died behind it. And all of them together now. All of them go to parties, picnics. Like, nothing ain't happen. They stand on it. And that's how I'm trying to help the city be a better place, too. I'm trying to stand on it. Were there any specific virals that you had or other members of your faction around Newtown 
had at that period of time, like late 90s, early 2000s, I'm going to say I had no ops. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to say like I went to one of the best high schools in Illinois. So I ain't going to say that I had no ops. I ain't going to tell you that. But as I got older, like going into the 2000s, like the 6s and the 7s, yeah, yeah, we had some ops, a few problems. And who was that? The hobos. What's the hobos? They was a group. They was a super team, you know? It was like Mike Magic Bird on one team, man. They were standing on shit, you know? We just happened to be into it. I didn't even know who they was. They older guys. All these guys is, like, way older than me. But, you know? And when you say a super team, what do you mean by that? It was a super team, man. They had Mike Magic Bird and a couple of more motherfuckers with them. They had the team. Like, they were strong. They were strong. They had put fear in people. The gang? Yeah. Was it GDs? BDs? It was mixed. They had everything. That's one of the... I ain't gonna say it's smart, because I ain't no gang member no more. But that's smart. Like, you got everybody with you. Like, who going to go against you if you got every gang with you? The hobos was that mixture of gangs? Yeah. But where you were at, was it just BDs? Yeah. And what type of issues did you have with the hobos? Like, how were they handled? Man, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Well, I came home from boot camp in 07, and I was fresh out of boot camp. And it was like, oh, we into it with them, you know? So I just jumped into it. I had all my breath, my energy. I could run, you know? I was fit. So I, you know? Did you personally ever commit any acts of violence against a hobo's member? Yes, sir. What did you do? We shot down bow legs, and that was the big mistake. Like, when you do something, you don't do it right, they come back to hunt. We lost like two guys behind that shit. So I want to ask a couple of more questions about them. You said you shot down bow legs? Yeah. Is his name Gregory Chester? Yes, sir. And bow legs is his nickname? Yes, sir. And what did you mean when you say shot him down? He was coming out of our building and we chased him down. We chased him down. He could run for a big guy, but we chased him down, and, you know, we just shot him down. Thought we killed him, and he ain't died, and that was a mistake, and that's where a super team kicked in at. We lost two guys at a funeral home in broad daylight. So you say he was leaving out of one of your buildings? Yeah. Are you talking about somewhere in Newtown? Yeah. Yeah. He was leaving out of one of our buildings, and somebody spotted him. Like, bowlegs down there. We just jumped on it, like, ran him and chased him down. How many times did you shoot him? They saying it was 19 shots, but it was 17. I know it was 17 times he got shot. You were trying to kill him? Yeah, for sure. At the time, like, I ain't with that shit no more. But at the time, shit, if you know, you know. It's like you part of your environment. Flunky, send-off, whatever you want to call it. I called it a send-off move, you know? For a motherfucker to be like, oh, yeah, go ahead and do that, you know? That's a send-off move, man. I never do that again. Would that be typically for people who are part of the Newtown BDs to go and engage in acts of violence? I mean, that was my first time engaging in some shit like that, you know? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for cursing, man. But it was my first time engaging in, like, something drastic like that. But it was a rush. It was like, you get a rush from that shit. I'm sorry, damn. You said the super team kicked in and you lost two people at a funeral home? Yeah, lost two people. Lost two of our guys. 
Antonio Blewett, and Slapo. Rest in peace, good dudes. And what do you mean when you say you lost them? They got killed outside the funeral home, AR League. Were people selling drugs over in Newtown, the BDs? I mean, when the projects was up, shit. I mean, it was an enterprise. Shit, I mean, you in poverty. You ain't got no choice but to make money. When the projects was up, ain't no money out on the streets now. They broke, starving, gangbang. They need to get on YouTube. Could anybody, so like a hobos member or anybody come over and sell drugs in Newtown? Nah, that's what the problem was. Like they was trying to extort people. Judge, I'm going to object and ask for a sidebar. Yes. So just coming back, Mr. Wiley, the members, when you were with them, so let's say from late 90s to mid 2000s, members of the Newtown BDs sell drugs in that area? I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah. Could anybody just know? And why not? You ain't from there. First of all, you ain't just finding Christopher Columbus delaying it. Nah, nah. If you ain't from if you ain't from the neighborhood, like you ain't gonna like you ain't going nowhere that you ain't from. Like ain't nobody just entering no project building. Like it ain't just like these blocks. So you reference a couple of times that the project's Newtown was no longer or is no longer up. Yeah, it's no longer up. What happened? The buildings got tore down. Do you remember about when that was? 2002. At some point, did you move to Parkway Gardens? Yeah. Was there a specific reason why you moved to Parkway Gardens? That's where everybody was. Yeah, everybody from the low end was on 63rd and, you know, you go where you know people. Shit, I knew everybody on 63rd, and so that's where I went. Did you shooting bow legs have anything to do with you going to Parkway? I mean, yeah, part of it. Yeah, I mean, we use our heads. If they keep coming through this block and tearing it up, we not finna stand in front of these row homes. They're gonna have to come to the O. They're gonna have to come in Parkway to get us, you know? You're gonna have to come through them gates. So yeah, we did. That's the truth. So I think you told us at the start that you moved to Parkway in about 2006. Does that sound about right? Yeah, 2007, like 06, 07. Yeah, I've been at Parkway Garden since 2002 through. Since our buildings fell, that's where a quarter of our block went. A quarter of our block went through the Tukaville area and all that. You know, the projects... They spread it out. It went everywhere. What do you mean when you say you were over there in 2002? That's where the majority, like, nice amount of people from our projects moved to. Like, like the low income into Parkway. Were you back and forth or something? I'm just trying. I was back and forth. I was back and forth from Newtown. Like, I stayed in there 06, but I was everywhere. Like, I ain't just staying there because I was able to go to Gyro City to steal. Even when I was in there, I was able to go to the other side with no problem. So again, just to make sure we're on the same page. 06, 07, you solidly in Parkway Gardens for at least a period of time? Yeah. Okay. Where were you staying when you went to Parkway? Like, did you have a lease? Were you staying with someone? Yeah, I was staying with someone. I was staying with a girl. Okay, and eventually, you left in 2011? Yeah. Okay, so when you first got to Parkway Gardens, 2006, 2007, were there other black disciples in Parkway Gardens? Yeah. Like a few, a lot. Was it all BDs? How was it? It was a mix like mix, you had some MCs, you had some GDs, you had some Stones, you had some BDs, a lot of BDs, but it was mixed. At some point, did that change? Yeah. When did that start to change? Probably like 
08, 09, when Shorty Freeman started popping up and shit? Okay, so who is Shorty Freeman? He was the king, like one of the kings, one of the founders. He ain't no founder, he the king. He was the king. The king of what? The BDs. <laughs>